This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Ah, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. What's going hey, on? Hey, Jim. Oh, it's going so good. You didn't have, like, the um, great... Yeah, and it's like... Did have as, great as you know, I saw the Avengers this great past weekend. That, had, like, that was um, absolutely fantastic. Just about you know everything you could ask for in a John movie like that. I mean, yeah, getting a real reverb. Movie, I appreciate like you know a complex Dark plot. You know, Dark Knight. This is not, but still thoroughly entertaining and one of the rare examples where yeah, you know, it really was as good as the type. Hmm, cool. <laughs> yeah, but you know, this time like I'm not not here to talk about the Avengers. I did that last week. This this time I'm talking about like a much much less famous series, but still somewhat well, well regarded, in a, and I guess in a cult sense, because I'm I'm going back to a series that is rich in continuity, both both within the Marvel universe and you know within like the history of this pod this podcast as well. So this is um I'm talking about um Jonathan Hickman's um Secret Warriors series for Marvel. Now let's let's start things off by like um we're going back to like what I wrote about the uh, very first volume. Um, Nick Fury, Agent of Nothing, um, way back, it's like way back on July 31st, 2010 from the site. I talk now, basically I say that, you know, I, I picked this volume up because it was like in the half-off ends of Comic-Con and I heard good things about it. So I figure, hey, you know, it's like, let's go and give it a shot. And I'm reading this right here and part of me looked, part of me understands like, yeah, you know, it's like, because it, the search volume didn't really um, like grab me in the way that I, I wanted, I, I was expecting it me expecting it to, because basically the whole premise behind this series is that um, Nick Fury, um, spy master of the Marvel Universe Supreme, the kind of guy who, you know, who, who's um, skills at, you know, um, but manipulating and outsmarting his opponents and, like, um, like juggling all the behind the scene, all the balls behind the scenes of the Marvel Universe is basically on par with Batman. Um, it's like, he's basically found out that, you know, all that, um, that um, his, the organization he's been working for all these years, S.H.I.E.L.D., has actually been um, infiltrated by by its um by his um its um, opposite organization Hydra, and like they've just been pulling his strings for all these years, and that everything Nick Fury has done has just been compromised by these bad guys who are uh, basically the uh, like the remnants of Nazi Germany, um, like um, refunded and um, out out to secure world world domination. Now, it's one of those um, reveals that you know it's like oh. Uh, everything you knew was wrong, and it's but it was just the way it was handled. Just didn't feel genuine. Like it was more like attention grabbing than anything else. Like, hey, you know, it's like that. Like everything Nick Fury has done for the past, like you know, like th- like forty odd years in Marvel Comics, all compromised. Everything he was doing was all was all like part of the bad guy's plan, and that just didn't grab me at all, really, because. Because I mean, it's just one of those things. Like, like these, these kind of revelations be, have become old hat over the years, and um, I just and, and so that's that kind of like um, soured me on a lot of a lot of the first volume. Now I'm looking right here, and I'm all talking about how apparently like um, theories um shtick um, works well when he's like a supporting character, but when he's fo- but when he's like you know, becomes a focus, it becomes less um becomes more of a liability since since. Since you know, like as he, when he's doing this, all this um, manipulating stuff as a supporting character, it's like you know you don't have to explain why how he's able to pull this stuff off. But um, when he's yeah, but when he's the main character, you've actually got to like, you know get more dig more into his character. And and important part like the most jarring part is like the uh, the supporting. Apparently, I didn't like the supporting cast all that much at the beginning because um, the main because like a lot they introduced a lot of. New- so they didn't introduce a lot of new characters. These were because like the main cast, the main supporting cast for this for this series is a group of group of teenagers from from Nick Fury's um, secret um, Caterpillar Files. Basically, um, kid kids who have been um, kids who've got su- um, superpowers but haven't been like um, comp- um, compromised or or approached by any any organization. There's um, Yo-Yo Rodriguez, um, who's got super speed. Um, Sebastian Druid, who's got like great control of magic. Um, Jerry Sledge, who can you can like make his body uh, like absorb uh, absorb any like, kind of material that he that he comes in contact with, as well as adjust his size. Um, it's like um, Daisy Johnson, the team leader, who, who's got um qu- like um like um quake powers. 
um, JT James, who can like view any just about any object with um hell with um with fire, and Alexander Aaron, um Phobos, the uh, son of the son of Ares, god of war, whose um whose power here is like he's as the son of as anyone familiar with Greek mythology will know, like um he's he's Phobos, he's he's the god of fear. So, like Fury is like recruited all these kids for a specific mission, and that's to basically you know help overthrow the world, help. Help, like help secure, take, help secure the world from Hydra's new domination as the um, you know, big, big, big cock on the block right here. But you know that's not everything, because it turns out that this is this is part of a much much older conflict, and it's and um and this is where Hickman um like starts bringing in the re- the retcons, because while um while Shield and Hydra, uh, or especially Nick Fury and Hydra, have been like you know button heads like in the Marvel universe for years. Turns out that they're they're also part of a conflict that um th- that was eventually that was um three headed in nature because while you've got while Hydra is born of the remnants of Nazi Germany, Fury represents the United States interests. There's another faction here that hasn't see that was represent that um that hasn't been represented here at all. That's that's Russia and that and they take the form of this other organization called Leviathan. Basically, they're they're a mixture of the um, they're made up of the Russian interests in post in the post World War II era, but they were taken off the board um, by it's like by by um, by combined Hydra and um, the Hand, you know Marvel's like evil ninja um, supply you know supply depot, and it's like they've been they've been um, like dormant for years until now when they finally got the power source they they've needed in order in order to reawaken. So. Secret Wars is basically um story of like, Nick Fury trying to manage this this three sided conflict between between his forces, Hydra and Leviathan. As well as like you know, just like trying trying to find his place in this it's like in the in this modern world. Now, for all the things I said about this first volume, it's like it's it actually like really uh, the series actually really did grow on me. It's like the more I read read of it. It's like after reading, I bl- if memory serves, I did. I do remember saying great good things about the uh, second volume when I took to my um, Hickman um, centric podcast last year, um, and um, the third volume, um, Wake the Beast, did also a great job of um, establishing Leviathan and showing you that hey, you know, it's like why didn't Russia have a, a uh, have its own like spy organization as well? So it's like there's a log- there's a logical reason for um like for Leviathan to exist. And they also set up a nice, um, nice conflict as well in this in this third volume because you've got because while you've got I mean, you know, like because like while um, Fury's organization is like is is easy like, you know like the least like the, the least of the three in terms of like manpower manpower and superpowers it's like it's you know it's um it makes a nice balance in the sense that you know it shows um Hydra and and Leviathan going head to head. And um, whittling things down, while also showing that um, Baron Strucker, um, Fury's longtime nemesis and the head of Hydra, he's also got his talons into one of um, the members of the Secret Warriors, and like how he's going to try and explain that. So there's a nice like little little give and take there. It's like you know, like not at, no one organization here has the has an advantage o- over the other. It's like and so like, there's a nice there's a good there's a great sense of conflict right there, but. I guess like the thing that appeals to me this that um is significant for me about all this is that well I've talked to you talked talked before about how I like I've come to enjoy Hickman as a writer um this um like Secret Warriors these six volumes basically represent his first um like your know, long form story um it's like told like like a uh, in, like told from like um told over a space of like twenty eight issues now everything you've done he's done for Image so far has been uh, has been like you know four, short four issue series like Transhuman, The Red Wing, um, Pax Romana, and um, Nightly News, which was six issues. And but this is the first time he's he's had he's got a chance to tell the story like over a long over a much um, longer longer term and bring it to a conclusion. Now I can't um, put my finger on this exactly, but I seem to remember this series someone saying that the series was supposed to run longer than twenty eight issues, which uh, I can't. Which, on one hand, like you know, it's, I can't say that it's it suffers from being only twenty eight issues, but still, there are some parts that I wish um were explained explained a bit more. First of all, um, like I've got enough knowledge of the um back of um 
of Nick Fury to know that you know who is supporting cast stars. You're going to see like guys like Dum Dum Dugan, um, Jasper Sitwell, and like the Howling Commandos like at some point in in the story. And so that's that's no big deal. But they start bringing in like some of the older some of the like older older characters, and that's when I start like um. They're saying like, wait, should I should I know who this guy is, or is this someone he just created for the, uh, for the like for the series, or is this someone he just, he just did not have enough time to develop? Still, it's like it's the thing. Like I'm looking at his long form storytelling here. I have to admit that he pulled he he pulls it off um pretty well for the most part because I'm rereading the first volume. Like again, it's like I realize that there's stuff he he planted here that um I. That um, actually like pays off later on in the sh- in the series, um, like when um, when Phobos is talking about all the fates of all these of the um, other secret warriors, and um, I look and say like, hey, you know that's that's kind of actually how things how things turn out. Or when the when Fury is given is telling Daisy, yeah, I, I got at one point in the first volume when um, when, Fu- when um, after like um, the secret warriors have been summoned to the um, one of the, one of the um, Hammer ship docks in order to um. Like turn the tide in the fight between um, Hydra and Fury's agents, um, like Daisy's um, tells, um, calls Fury on the fact saying, "Hey, you know, I I came running when you pushed this button," and um, Fury says, "I didn't push this button," and and she's like, "Like what the hell?" It's like Fury's like, "Hey, you know, there's answers you're never going to get for this thing, so you better deal with it." But then we find out who did, and also one of the uh, revelations about about um, Fury's moles in the. Uh, like in Hy- it's like in Hydra is also handled um handled pretty well as pretty well as well especially, especially if you're paying attention because I mean it, the thing is because I mean, he like it's clear that like, Hickman was operating with a long term plan plan for this series and he, and regardless of whether or not it was um cut short it still play it still plays out um pretty well it's like and it's like and it's like and there's like and I can't I also can't stress enough the fact that uh, you know while while Hickman's um creator owned stuff that I've read through Image so far does tend to suffer in the character development department as you know he's Hickman is really more of a big ideas man but um Secret Secret War is a much different um type type of series type of series than that than his image work because he's actually dealing with you know like um, ground level espionage stuff for the most part granted a lot of these people have like superpowers. But he's still dealing with, you know, like um, mostly like hum- human level concerns with all these, like with all with all these characters, and it's like, and that's also the kind of thing that you can actually do really well in the Marvel universe, because like, even if the Marvel Marvel universe is never like a perfect situation for like displaying absolute realism, it is a um, still a great universe for nailing um, genres onto uh, onto the side of um, existing superhero concepts. Secret Warriors, in, in particular, is a good example of it, of like um, them nailing, um, nailing like a spy and espionage story onto the, like into a superhero format. So it's, so like I said, it's it, like I said, it's not like I mean, it's not it's not perfect. It's like there are some, like I said, there are like like some like high continuity issues that that I kind of wish were better explained, especially towards the um, especially in the final volume, which. Which basically, which um, which to be honest, like if I had not read um Jonathan Hickman's Shield um, miniseries, I would have no idea what the hell was going on right here, because because okay, so for those of you who haven't read um Hickman's Shield series, um, it was it was interesting, even though it's one of those series that I kind of feel that you know if it had been tied to the Marvel universe, it may have been more interesting because you know it's. Hickman uh, casting all these like historical figures like Leonardo da Vinci um, and Nikola Tesla as like great like superhero type figures, but as far as his connection to the Marvel universe, it was tenuous at best, and you kind of wonder like why would this be connected at all? Well, as it turns out, the last volume of the series, Wheels Within Wheels, um, does actually tie back into um, <clears throat> Hickman's work in Shield right here, and you know it's like. As far as I tell in a nice self-contained story right here, that is a huge no-no as far as I'm concerned. Yes, that's right. I said no-no because because the thing is, like, it's like it's cause like I didn't and I didn't realize this until I um it's like until I um looked this up on Wikipedia earlier this um earlier today that um the person who instigates this you know this 
like this um like uh, menagerie or it's like this ongoing like feud between the organizations of Hydra, Shield, and, Le- and, and Leviathan was actually um, Leonardo da Vinci. No, really. Um, and it's like and it's like I'm looking at this and well I, I like lots lots of um, bits of this lots of parts of this uh, like of this like this final final story. It's like it's the fact that you know like, what the hell is why is Leonardo like you know I like, get to, like I'm giving these guys um the various um like machines and knowledge they they use they need in order to achieve this particular um their particular aims. You know I'm just kind of like well, why is he doing this other than just you know drive the plot and I I can't shake the fact that you know if I I won't under I won't get the full answer until I read until I read the second Shield miniseries which is set to be collected um. Well, the final two issues are supposed to come out later this year, so it may come out in paperback sometime next. So I, I figure I'm not going to get the full story about this this particular aspect of the plot until until the end. And that's kind of like I will say that's a that's really that's really annoying on my part. But you know, it's like if you can, like I said, it's there's enough good stuff here with the characters um, that I'm willing to that that I'm willing, that it's not it's not a deal breaker for me. Maybe for you, depending on your tolerance of continuity for Marvel, for Marvel series, but you know that's good. Uh, I'll, let, I'll let you guys make make that call yourself. Still, still though, it's like when we're coming back to um, like that that initial like um, plot hook. You know, I said about you know like Hi, um, Hydra um, running Shield for years. Um, you know, like that. Like I said, it's it's an attention grabbing thing, but it's also kind of kneecapped in the. Uh, it's like in the end as well, because um, John. Yes. Okay, because here's the thing though, you know, like we've like I've talked about how like Nick Fury is like you know a master spy man. He's got he's always like got he's always like one step ahead of the bad guys, um, and he's playing everything behind the scenes. Um, when he when it's revealed that he has been basically um, like Hydra's bitch for all these years, and then um, when he's in the final. In the final scenes, when he's real, when he's basically revealed to be at their mercy, that um, what do you think the final plot twist is going to be? What do you think is going to be revealed about this relationship between Shield, between um, Nick Fury and Hydra, at the at the very end? Mm-hmm. That they're all uh, they're all going to get along and uh, and be friends. <laughs> not really. But not, not really. Like, <laughs> no, it's like well, that means like it's the thing about it. If if Fury, if Fury's been manipulated all this time, what do you think he's going to reveal to the to the head of Hydra at the very end? Yeah, I don't know. I can't guess. <laughs> ah, come on, man! You've read enough. You've read enough like science fiction and like other 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 bullshit stuff like this over other genre stuff like this over the years. Because okay, hmm. major spoiler warning for everyone who's for everyone who's read this, to er, who's listened this far. Um, it's like the, I mean, the big reveal is that you know if, that you know as as much as like as much as made out to be like that that um, Nick that um, Hydra is, that was meant to have made Nick Fury its bitch. It was it's eventually revealed in the end that Nick Fury had made them their, them his bitch um, all along. Oh, the 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 double switch. Hmm? Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, you fell into my plan. No, you fell into my plan. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like it's one of those things where it's like it, it's like it's, it's it's almost as bad as as a twist as the uh, as the initial one because but still it's like it's one I want to believe because you know like I because I believe in the on the the badass nature of Nick, Nick Fury that he is a character who is as a master spy man he it's he is by design. Meant to be once ahead of the bad guys, and so you know, I, I mean Hickman. Hickman does his damnedest to make this make this particular twist work, but I can't. But still, it's like because the thing is, um, the first that first story arc, um, was co was um co plotted by um, Brian Michael Bendis, and I can't help but think that Bendis came up with the idea of, you know, make make um, making it that so that Nick Fury, you know, had been um revealed to be like just like. At, at Hydra's um um had been doing Hydra's bidding all this time, but at the very end, you know, it's like now Hickman had to basically find a way to basically work it work it at the end that that um that um Nick Fury had basically been manipulating Hydra all this time. So it's like it's I mean 
not for nothing that this final volume is called Wheels Within Wheels. Mm-hmm. Is is what I'm saying here. So, I mean, so it's like, so I mean, it's like it's it's on one hand it's like this 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 initial this initial plot just kind of like you know it's 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 almost rend- rendered like a um, moot. It's like by by the end of the, but by the end of the first by by the final volume and, it, and, and but you also kind of wonder like, you know like how like this like any kind of like um like um distrust. Any, no, any kind of like um, frustration or um, anger that Fury re- registers in this first volume. Like, what is he just acting? Is he just um, like is this, like is he um, genuinely is he genuinely pissed at this at how things turned out? It's like it's oh, it's like oh, it, it makes you think and leaves and it leaves things up up like up for your own interpretation. Which on one hand, it's like. I guess you know because I'm like, like Marvel loves to plan, like try and like make you think that they've got this, they've had this plan from the very beginning. But such all a lot of this stuff has happened has happened over the years that I believe they're just that anything they do is just kind of like flying by the seat of their pants. And that that Hickman's um, retcons here are just kind of like him, you know, just like um, look taking this um, t- like taking this um, like initial setup and then just working it into the situation for, you know, creating that badass Nick Fury story that he always wanted to tell. So, but, you know, so I guess in the end, um, Secret Warriors works as much as you want to buy into the myth that, you know, Nick Fury is like, you know, like the badass spy master of the Mar- Marvel Universe. And, you know, even if he's, um, you know, not black like Samuel L. Jackson, but um, he's still, he is still, like, he, he, like um, this series still, like, um, Refer, like ultimately reaffirm my belief in his in his badassness, and I can I can say that I that I enjoyed it and I liked seeing all the very like like Kickman reveal all the various um the facets of this plot as as things went on, especially the um bit about the crack about the Kraken um the uh, the Hydra agent who is um basically the guy that the um the person who is um mate who is um who is uh, um especially like the person who is um he he is the kind of guy who's made, who um is set to guide you on the path to be the person who you are to be, and um, but it's real that he is that eventually he was um much, something much much different at the very at the very end of the story, and I also liked liked how um how Hickman worked in um like um, Mark believe it or not um, Mark Miller's um like um creation of the Gorgon the uh, the villain from his Wolverine Enemy of the State story arc. As a um, as a major Hydra player, and essentially like sets him up at the end of the story as being like basically like you know after Hydra has been you know, completely um, bent over by Nick Fury and everyone, he's basically um left left up um meant to be the um like the leader of the of the organization. It's like um from from here on out. Plus, he's also established as a very um, fearsome bad guy in this in this story. So basically, whenever he shows up, you expect that people will either die or they will lose limbs at the very <laughs> least. So, so overall, it's like overall, it's like it's it's definitely not a perfect series. I yeah, even if it and if it was cut short at the, at the if, at, even if it wasn't cut short, I still wish that Hickman had had a time to go into um other like um explain other things about the series, such as um the the black team, um which is the the uh the, the um the, all the other um, hidden superhero kids who are just like a much less manageable than um, than Daisy's team. Um, the uh, the other members of um, Fury's Howling Commandos, if he had given given some of them like you know much more um, solid development to make them into more you know, proper characters as opposed to like hey you know what I, they used to work with Nick Fury and all so but still it's like it's a it's a it's a fun espionage story that ultimately that that works more often than it doesn't and ultimately that's that's what that's why I like that's what I liked about it and while I'm continuing continuing to look forward to um, Hickman's Hickman's work with Marvel and otherwise. Um, Secret Warriors is currently available in six um, trade paperback and hardcover volumes, but there is an omnibus edition um, planned for later this this year. Actually, in a couple months, I think. I think it's already been solicited. So, whatever whatever format you plan plan on buying it in, you know, it's like, I don't know, it's like, listen to what I said, make your own call. It's like, it's, it's not for everyone, but still, you know, if you like if you've listened to what I, if you if you like what I recommended so far, then I think you'll probably like you'll you'll ultimately like this as well. Okay, with that, uh, I guess that wraps up another 
comic picks by the Glick. Is this, is this right? Yes, it is. And because next week um, we will maybe we may be even recording from San Jose. And I'll be talking about window washers in low Earth orbit. Yeah, there you go. And um, we'll talk to you next time. Um, we'll see you. See you around. Bye.